farmers more than meets the eye. Autobots wage their battle to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons. Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us. For this special figure showcase, we're going to be looking at the Transformers Generations Selects Super Megatron. Now I'm really excited about doing this figure. I know he's been out for a few months, um, but just couldn't get it at this particular time, but I've managed to get one now. This isn't just a standard Generation Selects figure, it's a Takari Tomy Mall exclusive figure. So I'm kind of hoping that there's much more inside this box and this is just the actual shipping carton. Um, one of the reasons, in fact, there's a few reasons why I'm excited to do this. Um, one is anybody who watches this channel or who knows me, uh, they know that I'm really excited and get a real buzz and a kick out of Japanese um, Transformers. And two is because of the whole story about this, to be honest. Um, what I'm going to do on this video, I've, I've completely lost track. Brilliant. Yes, there is something inside it. I'm going to, as you can see, I'm going to fully, fully unbox this guy from... Even the shipping carton down to this. Now this, this is what a Generation Selects package should look like. Look how good that is. None of this um, just, well, there it is. That's just the plain box. But again, with the Japanese, with the Takara stuff, they just seem to make that little bit more effort with everything. Yeah, really looking forward to seeing this guy. Okay, bit of brief sort of history about him. Um, if we go to the Japanese storyline and all the... Um, I suppose cartoons and stuff they had. Obviously, Sunbow stopped round about the Headmaster's time. Now, in Japan, look at this box. Look at this box. It's brilliant. Decepticon logo, Transformers Generation Selects. Um, they continued with their stories, obviously, in their cartoons, and they went right up to Zone. And now, unfortunately, the very next toy line, the Battle Stars Return of Convoy, didn't actually get a cartoon. Oh, that just opens. Lovely. So we're going to have a look at that in a second. But before we do that, I want to have a look at this. That's brilliant. That's obviously with the figure that we're going to be looking at in a second inside. There's the Takara Tomy, and there's all the bump about it on the back. Um, and yes, uh, they did. They, they made the toy line of 1991 Return of Convoy, but they only ever made the Autobots or the Cybertrons, shall we say. A um, couple of reasons. One is just because that the Autobots, so the goodies always sell better in Japan. Um, and they, so they never made it. So this figure, I would love to say it's an original 19, um, you know, 91 figure, but it isn't. It's stunning. <laughs> it's beautiful. But basically what this figure is, is if they had a continued the toy line back in 1991, this is the figure that we would have got. And basically... There's a brilliant, brilliant guy. And again, anybody who knows Japanese Transformers, I'm going to show you some pictures now. Um, who created like the manga series, the cartoon series. His name is Ban Megami. And he, literally, this is his drawings. This is taken from TF Source of Super Megatron. So that is a brilliant, brilliant likeness. And he was the main baddie to Star Convoy at the particular time. But he never, as I say, he never got a release at all. So here is, again, Ban Megami's amazing artwork. There is Star Convoy on the one side, and there is Super Megatron just above Star Saber and Grandus. And yeah, he's, he's the artist who also designed Star Saber and stuff as well. So this guy is a living legend with regards to Japanese um, figures. Anyway, on to the actual figure. What I'm going to do now then, we're going to have a really, really detailed look at this guy in all of his modes. Now, this guy's got... Uh, he's basically a triple changer, but he's actually a quad changer because he's got two robot modes and he's got a jet mode and he's also got a tank mode. So in a second, I'm going to take him out of that. The instructions obviously are all in Japanese. So this is going to be a bit of fun trying to work out all this. One, quite, one quick look at the inside of the box though. And it is just a Decepticon logo there. And then you've got the Generation Select Autobot logo there so i'm going to come back with you in a few seconds i'm just going to take him straight out of that 
right then we're back and this is literally just how i've took it out of the packaging you can see i've not done or touched anything to it i just want to have a quick look at it in this particular mode first and foremost the detail on this is brilliant you can tell that this is going to end up being his cannon um the wing bits here you can twist side to side these are going to end up on his shoulders as well which is again it's just stunning i've not done anything to it at all i just again want to give you just a bit more I suppose a bit of a history behind the character and where it all came from. So as I've said, I've mentioned Ban Megami already um, and what a legend he is. I mean, other names of other characters who, who he designed, I mean, everybody knows him. It's a who's who of all the main characters. So he also designed Star Saber, God Jin Rai, Victory Leo, you know, all the, all the big ones. And it was basically a Japanese manga. And then I know that some people are always interested or ask me loads of questions. And I've just quickly found this again to show you. So you can see there, there he is again. The art's by Ban Megami. And you can see there, in fact, again, is this Super Megatron. So we are going to now be transforming him. I'm going to do it off camera because I don't want to spoil it for yourselves and to keep the length of the video down. But I'm going to be transforming him into Super Megatron first and foremost. And then we'll probably have a look at the tank mode before looking at the other robot mode, which is Ultra Megatron. So coming back to you in a second. Right then, so we're back and I've transformed him from his Super Jet mode to his Super Megatron mode. And as you can see already, he does look absolutely brilliant. Apologies I didn't do it on camera. A couple of reasons. One is to keep the length of the video down. And two is just to not spoil it for yourself. Because I'm sure you'll appreciate a lot of these new figures. The, the transformation process is just brilliant. It's so satisfying. It's sublime. But what I will show you is although I don't speak Japanese, these were really easy to understand. And it just took the 24 steps to get him into Super Megatron. So let's have a look at him. Because, yeah, look at him. He's beautiful. He's brilliant. So we've got a proper, as, you could, as I say, yeah, G1 head sculpt there really great detail they've even given him eyebrows look at the detail there the head itself will tilt backwards and forth you can see it's on like a ball ball and socket it'll twist all the way around you've got full articulation in the head the shoulder cannons rotate backwards and forwards the fins on these which again you can alternate and move on the jet mode as well do exactly the same so it's totally up to you how you want to uh, display him the articulation and the posing ooh, just chip flip the front down the posing possibilities on this figure are tremendous up and down full all the way around in the shoulder joint you've got a twist just under the shoulder as well you've got a double bicep joint which is used for transformation but of course you can use it for posability the wrists will turn in and out but again that's mainly for transformation they've even detailed although they're not individual each individual finger on his hand which is brilliant um yeah there's just so much you could call it a waist tilt but as you can see for yourself it's just above the waistband but it still does mean that you can rotate it 180 degrees these will come up so you can bring the legs up the range of motion with the legs is huge full knees tilt and even the ankle tilt as well so i'm going to quickly just try and balance him there in fact what i'll do is let's attach the cannon i deliberately didn't attach the cannon i wanted to share that with you guys is he gonna fall probably so here's the huge cannon there's a couple of points you can articulate and attach this on now the other thing to mention as well is these five millimeter ports across the whole of the body he's got 15 in total 15 so although they're basing this figure on like an older like as i say 1991 figure he's very much up to date with the fact that you can attach battle masters and whatever else to him he's got 15 five millimeter ports on him there's also a dowel there and of course this is going to be the cannon so we're going to attach this as you'd expect to the back of his arm his right arm i'm going to put it on this way i'm going to put it this way around there's a couple of ways you can do it i'm going to show you this and then i'm going to just pose him up and then i'm going to quickly just give you a bit more brief history about this particular guy because earlier on i said there was two reasons why he didn't actually get a release in the 90s and the first one which i mentioned to you was the fact that the destrons the decepticons that is basically pretty much all throughout transformers history um there's always been less of them far far less of them produced that was the first reason and the second was as i mentioned that zone was the last cartoon and even though this was battle stars they, they were no plans at all to make a cartoon so they didn't really want to run the risk of making figures you know for something that didn't even have a cartoon so this is where battle stars and manga jumped in other things that you perhaps would like to quickly know about him is that of course 
in the normal Transformers continuity, it was Galvatron because Megatron was turned into Galvatron. But funnily enough, when it came to these, Galvatron was basically, I'm going to read this from TF Source, so I can't take any credit from this. Uh, Megatron was created from a resurrected and rebuilt Galvatron and his last scene meeting is end in the Headmasters. Yes, that means that after Megatron became Galvatron, he became Megatron yet again. So that's the reason for that. There you go. What a great robot mode. And funnily enough, there's another. There's an Ultra Megatron robot mode as well, which in the same figure, but still looks loads, loads different. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change him into Ultra Megatron mode and come straight back to you. Okay, I'm back and I've partially transformed him into Ultra Megatron and I'm going to show you how to do the rest. So at the moment, he's not looking too different. Again, the transformation process, so from Super Megatron to Ultra Megatron is across that line there. You can see it's starting and this is again a total of 13 steps. So it's not too difficult. I seem to have done the first few and I'll talk you through them right away. But before I do that, again, I want to show you um, a bit of artwork and again give you a bit of story about it so this again is Ban Megami's artist impression of it and again it's it's so good because this is pretty much what he's going to look like in a second so again another brief bit of history that unfortunately Super Megatron was defeated quite easily by Star Saber and then he's upgraded and he's now known as Super Megatron. So what I've done is the chest piece here. I'll just show you, to be honest, you can twist it around backwards and forwards. So that was how uh, Super Megatron was. You can then turn it around, push it up and you've got Super Megatron. You'll also now notice that there's a big red dot there. There wasn't before. That's because this also twists around. You can lift and raise. There's another thing there. I'm going to keep secret for now, but you can twist this part of the face and you can twist that part of the head. So that's how that twisted round. I've folded out the wings from the back and then this is what's cool. And this is just amazing. So there's his fusion cannon. Here's the fusion cannon. We're gonna open this up like so. I'm gonna fold, which way is this going? I don't wanna confuse myself. Yep, there we go. That folds up. So there's another set of cannons inside here. So what we're gonna do, he says ever so carefully. In fact, if I fold that there, that'll go all the way down. Inside the fusion cannon, there's another set of cannons which come out again. There's another one of them five millimeter peg dowels I was on about. This can then close back up. This can then close back up. And now we've got an amazing shield as well now. So let's turn him into full on Super Megatron. So this is going to go, sorry, Ultra Megatron. Let's pop that on the dowel here like so. And then the added cannon is now going to be added onto the top of here. I really, really should learn to not do this with brand new toys and give them a bit of a warming into first and foremost. Right, there we go. Look at him now. Now he's powered up. He's got these jet wings. Again, you can move them all around at the back. Same thing with the shoulder cannons. This will obviously, as you've just seen, it's a five millimeter dowel. You can rotate it, tilt it up, bring it back, tilt it in however you want. I just, yeah, they've just made him look even more menacing. I'm going to try and get him to balance quickly. It's just such a great figure. And I've basically only just touched, brushed, you know, brushed the surface of it. So we've seen two robot modes. We've seen the jet mode. And then what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to turn him into his tank mode. So very quickly, let's just have a quick once over of this guy again. Brilliant. It's stunning. It's so, so good. It, Takara told me, there you go, mall exclusive. We're going to come back right now and he's going to be, I'm not going to even run the risk. I'm going to balance him there and I'm going to come back with you and he's going to be in his tank mode. Okay, so we're back again and I've transformed him into his tank mode. And um, yeah, let's have a look at it. This, in my opinion, is probably the weaker uh, mode out of all of it. I haven't fully done it because, again, I've saved some of it for yourselves. So this obviously was the fusion cannon um, that when it's in this particular mode with them guns hidden is the one that's on his arm. And then, of course, we detached it all completely. We had it as a shield on the one arm and we had the guns on the shoulder in the robot mode. But now you can see I've just assembled it again together slightly differently. And we've got there's the five meter dowel there. There is the hole just on the top, so we can just pop this into place. It'll fit in, and this now means, of course, you've got a fully rotating 360 degree tank turret, and of course, this will move up and down as well. 
it still looks quite good um it's just i suppose a bonus mode it's it still looks good the color scheme works really really well the back of the legs folded out to be the treads uh, you can tell that that's the feet um it, it still looks good as i say I'm, I'm very 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 impressed with this figure uh what i'm going to do now i'm going to transform him back to his robot mode for the final time so we can do some comparisons and then there's one other little gimmick that this figure's got in store as well which is again just an absolute treat to see so coming straight back to you with him in robot mode for the final time and that's the way i'm going to choose to display him as well right then so we're back for the final time and i've got him in his ultra megatron mode and this is i say the way i'm going to be displaying him so what we're going to do now we're going to do some comparisons and there's also one other little trick that i wanted to show you that um takara have got up their sleeves so as i'm sure you can imagine poor old megatron again he failed against uh, star convoy and yet again he was able to come back this time as and this is a crazy name now because he's now going to come back as ultra megatron uh, mega and for that reason he can do something else as well so you can just about see there with the head sculpt i'm going to turn the head back there and now you could this is what i was on about earlier that last little trick in the bag they've got i'm going to try and do this one-handed whilst holding him yep there we go i've just about turned that around so you've basically now got three bot modes it is just a flick of the head that is literally it there's nothing else that changes but he looks even more fearsome and he looks even more menacing so what a figure what a figure it's it's so so good as as again i've mentioned loads of times so let's do some comparisons and then funnily enough and then the irony doesn't just end with this it's crazy so this is it's pretty much it's a heavily extended retool as well as redeco of um titan's return galvatron and you can probably tell that straight away now when you're looking at the legs but it's it's obviously massively retooled it's they've added so many things to it but the irony of course is of course Megatron to Galvatron, Galvatron to Megatron, and backwards and forwards, and vice versa. So thankfully they got rid of the crazy little Titans Return gimmick on there, and they just made it so much, so much better. Um, it's really noticeable, as I say, when you turn it around on the back as well. They've got the same legs. The arms are very, very similar. Um, and I'll just show you this one as well. So yeah, the back of the arms, there's the back of the legs with the tank treads. So it is all really, really similar. Let's balance him there. If he would have come out in 1991, he'd have been <laughs> a bit, yeah, you can't even fit on the picture. That is, of course, Star Convoy, who would have been his buddy. But let's have a look at him now, or main nemesis, shall we say, his, his buddy. This is the new Kingdom Galvatron, who's the leader class and is pretty much as big as that. And, and as it seems to be all Decepticons at the moment, there's your standard Voyager class figure at the moment that they've released. There is, of course, your Nemesis Prime. But there you go. I hope that this video uh, was interesting for you. I hope, you know, um, <laughs> I didn't waffle on too much. I tried to give you some information on him. It is a stunning figure. It is it is an exclusive. So if you can get your hands on it, in my opinion, it's definitely worth trying to find out and hunt down. So obviously, I'd like to thank TF Source, who I used um, a couple of pictures and stuff from as well. But also... There's a chap called Alex, and he did something on myshinyrobots.com as well. So I've managed to pinch a few things, or use, shall we say, a few things from their websites. But one last final look, guys. Here he is. This is the Takara Tomy Mall exclusive Generation Select Megatron. And in my opinion, as I'm sure you can tell, definitely, definitely worth... Is he going to go? Yep, worth adding to your collection. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Take care. Thanks for watching. Like and comment. And don't forget to subscribe.